When talking about hypothetical examples, 99% of the time, they wind up being completely meaningless, and they're just for fun, simply because you're assuming that everything else would have stayed exactly the same. You're assuming that nothing whatsoever would have changed if this play went the opposite way. As an example, I made a video a while ago about the blown call that ended Pittsburgh's historic winning streak during the 1979 season. The referees botched a call with regards to an onside kick that Pittsburgh recovered. However, even if the referees didn't blow the call, the Steelers are still down by three points. They still have to get into field goal position, which would not be easy since their offense was struggling all day and they turned it over four times. They still have to make the game-tying field goal, which would not be easy since rookie kicker Matt Barr wasn't that good yet, and they still have to win the game in overtime. You know what I mean. There are very few times in NFL history where you can definitively say that if this one play was any different, then the entire game, and literally the entire season, would have changed. This is one of those times. This is the story of the play that changed the 1989 season, and possibly beyond. Let's break this down. It's Christmas Eve, and the Los Angeles Rams are taking on the New England Patriots in the final game of the season. For the Rams, to say that this is a huge game is an understatement. They've had an up-and-down season, to say the least. They started off 5-0, looking like the best team in football and looking like a formidable challenger to the defending Super Bowl champion San Francisco 49ers. Heck, they even beat the 49ers during this stretch at Candlestick Park. Then, they lost four straight to drop to 5-4 including an overtime loss to the Vikings on a safety. You don't see too many games ending on a safety. And then, they won five of their final six games, and currently, they sit at 10-5. and five. They can't win the division, since the 49ers are 13-2, and two, but they can get one of the two wildcard spots. They just have to win this game against the Patriots. And fortunately for them, the Patriots are terrible. Yes, that feels weird to say, but there was a time where the Patriots were the laughing stock of football. They entered this game at 5-10, with absolutely nothing to play for. They had dropped two straight games, they had an offense and a defense near the bottom of the league, and in their last two games entering this one, have been outscored 59-20. In fact, they're so bad that there's just over 27,000 people at this game. Nobody wants to spend their Christmas Eve watching this Pats team, in all likelihood, struggle against a superior Rams unit. So all the Rams had to do was win this game a game in which they were favored by a touchdown, and they'd be in the postseason. Seems simple enough, right? Well, not quite. At first, it seemed like it was going to be a relatively easy path to the playoffs for the Rams. Mike Lansford hit a chip shot field goal on the second drive of the game to make it 3-0 after the first quarter. Then, Mark Wilson, who started the game for the Pats under center, was benched after going 2 for 8 for 16 yards and an interception, posting a passer rating of 0.0. .0. Steve Grogan, now a 36-year-old veteran, didn't do much better early on, as he threw a pick 6 to Jerry Gray to make it 10 0. At halftime, the Rams led 10 3. And midway through the third quarter, following a 7 yard touchdown pass from Jim Everett to Buford McGee, the Rams were up 17 3. It looked like smooth sailing from here. For the second straight year, and for the sixth time in the last seven years, the Rams were playoff bound. But one acrobatic catch on third down later, and the Pats offense was beginning to show some signs of life. And after a 47-yard touchdown pass a few plays later from Steve Grogan to Irving Fryer, New England was right back in this thing. It's a 17-10 ball game. Mike Lansford then misses a 50-yard field goal, and on the following drive, the Pats tie it up this time on a four-yard run by John Stevens. It's now 17-all. And after the Rams go three and out on their next drive, kicker Jason Starofsky splits the uprights on a 48-yard field goal. New England, down 17-3 at one point, has now scored on three straight drives to make it 20-17. 17. 17 unanswered points, just like that. With just 519 left in the game, the Rams need a drive. Fortunately, they have Henry Ellard on their team who makes a 53-yard catch to get Los Angeles into scoring range. And with less than two minutes to go, Greg Bell punches it in from three yards out to give the Rams a 24-20 lead. He had an unbelievable game, recording 210 yards on the ground. It's not over yet, but it's looking good. All the Rams have to do is prevent the Patriots from going the length of the field to score the touchdown, 
and they're good to go. As you can probably tell, this is where things get extra juicy. Because for some inexplicable reason, even though there's about 150 left, the Rams decide to squib kick it. This is despite the fact that the Pats have not taken a kickoff to the house all season. And while Sammy Martin was a good returner, he wasn't a don't kick it to him type of returner like Devin Hester would eventually become. Whether this was by design or a mistake, I don't know. But now the Pats are starting near midfield. And with a good field position, the Pats start driving. A completion to a wide open Irving Fryer over the middle. Another completion to Irving Fryer for a first down. A screen pass to John Stevens to get close to a first down. And after a pass to Eric Sievers with just 9 seconds left, the Pats are on the 5 yard line. Now thousands of Rams fans across the country are expecting the worst. Many of them probably had flashbacks to the last time these teams met back in 1986. In that game, the Rams had a double digit lead in the second half. But then the Patriots came back, and with no time left, Irving Fryer caught a game winning Hail Mary. The Pats won that game 30 to 28. This felt like deja vu, although considering the stakes of this game, the heartbreak would be amplified to the 10th degree. First down, and Grogan's pass to Fryer is incomplete. Second down, and Grogan's pass to Sievers is incomplete. One second left. This is the last play of the game. What you're about to witness is the play that changed the 1989 season, and possibly beyond. Roll the tape. Front's got to get their hands up in Grogan's face so he can't get that clear sight downfield or into the end zone. This is it. To the back of the end zone. Dykes. No, he's out. The Rams clinch. goes to 5 and 11 for the year. John Robinson's Rams 11 and 5 and they're going to the playoffs. Hart Lee Dykes is still arguing that he caught this ball and was indeed in the end zone for the touchdown. Let's watch his feet as he comes right up underneath of the goalpost. Comes on that slant pattern. Grogan's got all the time he needs to throw the ball. Dykes on the slant pattern. He makes the reception there. One step, and the second one is out, and he didn't even hold on to the ball. So his argument is a moot point at this time. Well, it wasn't easy, but John Robinson is going to the playoffs. They clinch a wild card spot with that 24-20 win. Especially when you watch it from the reverse angle, I cannot stress enough just how wide open Hartley Dykes was on this play. The rookie first round pick caught five touchdowns all season, and this should have been number six. Grogan had all the time in the world, and Dykes had all the space underneath him. Instead, Grogan overthrows his man badly, and the Rams win the game, meaning that once again, they are in the postseason. So what happens if Grogan makes this pass? The Rams are out. But not just that, as you'll find out. First off, if the Rams missed the postseason, it would have gone down as arguably the craziest bottling of all time. What makes this incredible is that the Rams were almost guaranteed a playoff spot. The only way they would miss the postseason is if four things happened. If they won, Minnesota lost, Green Bay lost, or Washington lost, they'd be in. And yet, the other three things did not happen. On Saturday, Washington shut out Seattle by a final score of 29 to nothing. On Sunday, Green Bay defeated Dallas 20 to 10. And on Monday Night Football, on Christmas Day, the Vikings beat the Bengals 29 to 21. Side note, that was the first Christmas game in nearly two decades. If you want to know more about why that was the case, check out the video in the upper right corner. So if the Rams missed out, what would have happened? Green Bay would have made the postseason as the number five seed, edging out Washington based on a better conference record. This would have been Green Bay's first postseason appearance since 1982, and their first non-strike short in playoff appearance since 1972. That one play might have even changed who the MVP of the league was. There were only two players who received votes that season for the MVP, 
49ers quarterback Joe Montana, and Packers quarterback Don Mikowski. Mikowski led the league in pass completions, yards, fourth quarter comebacks, and game-winning drives. And he even threw more touchdown passes than Joe Montana. However, you're rarely, if ever, going to see a player on a non-playoff team win the MVP. But if Steve Grogan completes that wide-open touchdown pass, then the Packers are in the playoffs. And the voting might look a little different. And thinking really far ahead, if the Packers made a deep playoff run, even going as far as winning the Super Bowl, how long do they hold on to Mikowski? This even goes as far as whether or not they trade to acquire Brett Favre in 1992. It might be one of the most underappreciated what-if scenarios in the history of the NFL. One wide-open pass changed the entire playoff picture, and may have even changed the future of the league beyond that from an accolades and a roster standpoint. The 1980s were an interesting time for the NFL to say the least. But I think it's safe to say that with how the season ended, especially with a play like this, that the decade ended on a bang. Special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping on the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.